We are almost done discussing the scientific method. In this video, we're going to talk about the conclusion step. After you've done your analysis of the results, it's time to now to interpret what these results mean. Basically, you're going to be restating what was researched and telling people what the results say about it. Was your hypothesis rejected or did you fail to reject your hypothesis? In other words, the conclusion exists to clarify the meaning of the results. Now, it's very important that you understand uh, that a conclusion is also the, 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 where the scientist talks about what he's learned from the experiment, what he thinks the experiment did good and did bad, and how he thinks you should fix it. What do you think you can apply that experiment in? Um, how other people have talked about this experiment and what they, they've learned from it? How does this fit with science and as a whole? Conclusion is where the scientist gets what he's learned from this experiment and ties it in with this, what the science that already exists. We'll talk more about that when we talk about how to write a conclusion in the lab report lecture series, but I want to focus this video very quickly on the idea that you can't ever state something that's a fact in science because we are always open to change. So in, a, in science, you never say, uh, this is what the results proved. This is what the results supported. Instead, you can only say that the results rejected the hypothesis, in which case you have to reformulate the hypothesis, start over, or that it failed to reject the hypothesis. It is, as of now, based on the tools that I use and the data that I collected, and I can't say this hypothesis is wrong. You know, it's not wrong for now. It's, I can't say it's right, though. Because I know deep in my mind that someday someone else might re-examine the same thing I just looked at. Using better tools, collect data, and see that there's a better way to explain this phenomenon. A better explanation, a better answer for the research question. And so that's why when you write a conclusion, you never say the results supported the hypothesis. The results uh, proved the hypothesis. You can only say the results failed to reject the hypothesis or that they rejected the hypothesis. And that is one of the most important steps that scientific method because it takes a lot of creativity to understand the, resu the results, to uh, see what they mean, why they ended up the way they did. Uh, is there any problems that I've done that, that sacrificed the value of this experiment? How could I have fixed these problems? How can I use these results in, 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 the, in society? How can this be applied to society? And how can I uh, do a future experiment to expand on this more in the future? How does this tie in with other things that people have already discovered? All of these are things that scientists will do as they are writing up their conclusions. Depending on how much you controlled the experiment and how close the experiment is to real world situations, then is how much you can actually apply what you've learned from this experiment or from this study, correlation study, to the real world. Uh, if you only did a model, you can't really say that this generalizes to the, to the, to the real situation. Uh, like, for example, if you found out that smoking causes cancers in rats, you can't really say that it causes cancers in humans. Likewise, if you only did a correlational study, you can't say that it, it's causal. Likewise, if the experiment was done in a controlled situation which never mimics what really happens in the real world, you can't really say that this happens in the real world. So the degree to which you control the experiment and to which the experiment matches what happens in real life is important when you're trying to determine whether or not what you've learned from this experiment can be used and applied in the field of science or in real life. But regardless of what it is, conclusions usually will lead to applications where the science will get this information and create technology from it and change society because of it, which ties in with what we were talking about in the first lecture series, that the ultimate result of science is to use what we learn from it to improve life and to change life. And that's the one of the last parts of the different method. The last one is communication. 